tune as well. When I leave, I'm standing small down, lone loving boy. I'm gonna shake hands with you, alone with this loving boy. Down in Chevy, Illinois And my baby got a hard like Hard like railroad steel Well, my baby got a hard like railroad steel Never say I'm daddy happy Alright, that was a Rattlesnake Blues by Charlie Patton. Um, we are wrapping up the video lessons that go in conjunction with my new Charlie Patton ebook release, Charlie Patton Songs in Standard Tuning, which is now available at my website store at www.deltalumusic.com. Check out the link in the information uh, settings for access to it. This new book covers 14 songs across 99 pages. One of the most in-depth, intense look at Charlie Patton's work probably in the world. Um, I break down these 14 songs front to back. Everything you need to learn, uh, know to learn it. I myself, in studying this music, have become better. I've just been playing Charlie Patton all the time now through this, uh, <clears throat> through the course of the creation of this ebook. So it is my pleasure to finally wrap up these video lessons and <clears throat> we are wrapping it up with Rattlesnake Blues. So as a prerequisite to watching Rattlesnake Blues, I highly recommend, it is almost mandatory that you watch my Stone Pony Blues lesson which I covered a few days ago. It's a very long lesson but all of the things mentioned in that video reappear in this song. So once you get through that video Rattlesnake Blues is easy as cake. So highly recommend doing that. Alright so in order to start <clears throat> All you need is an acoustic guitar will do. I like to utilize plastic finger picks for my thumb, index and middle finger. That helped me. That, this is again optional. <clears throat> In playing along with Charlie Patton's music, you will also need a capo. If you don't have one, get one. Because if you were wanting to go back and listen to Charlie Patton, listen to the original recording and play along, you would be um, out of tone <clears throat> by a long range. So, even though these lessons are constructed in E standard tuning, having a capo is, is recommended if you wanted to play along with Charlie Patton after the lessons are done. So, <clears throat> Rattlesnake Blues is played in, in a standard tuning, <clears throat> but it's the, the tone of the standard tuning, the pitch, is set to G. So right now, like you would any regular guitar, it would be tuned to standard E tuning. My top string being the E, right? And then the fifth string being an A, right? So if you wanted to play along with Rattlesnake Blues, you take the capo and you put it on the third fret. The third fret. So now we've gone from E, F, F sharp to G. So now we are pitched in G, but we're playing in the key of E. Like I mentioned before, 85% of Patton's work in standard tuning revolves in the key of E. And we'll be looking at chords like E, A, B7 throughout those compositions. All right, so if, as you saw in the earlier performance, I had the capo <clears throat> on the third fret because I was played, playing exactly to what you hear Charlie Patton playing in the original recording. <laughs> All right, but for the learning purposes, the capo comes off and we are going to do everything in standard tuning. So let's go ahead and <clears throat> tune our guitars together 
This song is not a semitone up like the previous three lessons were. So we just have a standard E tuning. My top string is an E. Go ahead and tune on your end. My fifth string is an A. My uh, fourth string is a D. My third string is a G. My second string is a B. And my bottom string is an E. So go ahead and play an E major chord. All right, and and also a prerequisite to watching any of my lessons is watching my beginning finger picking volumes one through four. You have to be well versed in the finger style traditions of Delta Blues music to play along with any of my lessons. So to summarize, the expectation for the right hand is you have, you take the outer lining of the palm of your hand, you rest it <clears throat> gently about the top of the strings, somewhere in this vicinity. The thumb juts out and is hovering over the fifth string. The index and the middle finger are going to be responsible for playing the first, second, and third strings. And together you have this motion where you're pinching together with the thumb and the index and the middle finger. or having this kind of rolling sequence. <clears throat> the thumb is responsible for playing the sixth, fifth, and fourth string, the bass strings. The index and the middle finger are responsible for playing the treble strings, meaning the first, second, and third strings. So that's an expectation to have. Okay, so let's go ahead and start uh, with Rattlesnake Blues. Again, I highly recommend that you download and get access to the ebook because this is exactly what I follow page by page. The tablature is so clearly laid out there. <clears throat> that it, if you're a, a person that learns through tablature, get the book. If you don't want to sit and listen to me ramble on for, for an hour, get the book and just learn off the tabs. Believe me, it's really clear, clearly laid out there. So let's take a little break and we'll go over the uh, introduction and the main verse. All right, so the introduction, the introduction begins with sort of a <clears throat> combination of soft strums of the E major chord uh, where in the middle it's broken up in between measures or strums of the E major chord by this key uh, bass note happening on the fifth string second fret. <clears throat> this is the B note, the root of a B7 chord. So it's like a combination of playing the E major chord, playing this B note, followed by the top string open. So that's uh, the simple introduction. You start always first by playing the top string open, followed by three strums of the E major chord. One, two, three, four. Then play the top string open again, followed by the E strum. So the first uh, six notes are the top string open, then it's a strum of the E major chord, up stroke E major chord, down stroke. So one, two, three, four, then you play the top string open, five. So from, from the beginning it's one, two, three, four, five, then you downstroke with this uh, E major chord for the sixth note. So from the beginning it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you play that B note. And then you play the top string open. So it's I'll go really slow again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's that introduction sequence, sort of as like an intense 
breakdown of that, but you can just lead into it with simple strums of the E major chord. There's, you can break the rules a little bit. <clears throat> but that's what he's doing there. He's just beginning with strums of the E major chord flanked by this bass combination. Leads in with the E major chord. And at the end of the introduction, he transitions into the verse, which is going to sound like this. Goes like a rattlesnake, mama lordy, in the middle of his coil. All right, so we'll, we'll go over that. <clears throat> Again, these are elements coming back from Stone Pony Blues. We have the appearance of... Uh, there's two key elements happening here in the verse. You have the rolling bass lick combination as, as the first component, and then the second component is the pinched lick happening on the 7th and 8th fret on the bottom two strings. So those are those two components that appear in the first verse and throughout all of the stanzas apart from the last stanza. <clears throat> so it, it will just be a matter of repeating that. And to do that, the first, uh, the first three notes of this bass lick combination, what you'll do is you'll find again the B note happening on the fifth string second fret. And you're gonna slide that in. You'll you'll press down. You'll play the string, and then go ahead and slide all the way to the tenth fret. One, you know, tenth or seventh fret, and then you'll play the top string open after that slide run. So it's one. And you let that top string ring out for a while. And while the top string is ringing out, <clears throat> what you're going to do is play this uh, typical lick used in music written uh, for the key of E, especially in blues music. And this, this, the appearance of this pinch. And I play this, I have the thumb on the right hand come all the way down. And the way to finger this figure <clears throat> is you take the index finger on the left hand and you will hold down the first string on the seventh fret. Middle finger comes and plays the second string on the eighth fret. All right, and now with my right hand, the thumb comes down and plucks the second string while the index finger on the right hand plucks up the first string. So you have this pinch. And that's how to execute that lick. So the combination of the bass and that lick will sound like this. And it's in here in this part where he starts to sing, Just like a rattlesnake, mama lordy. Just like a rattlesnake, mama lordy. Just like a mama snake, mama lordy. plays this pinched lick uh, somewhere around six, seven, or eight times. I say mama lordy. It's just like a, a, a succession of quarter notes. Six or seven quarter notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mama Lodi is the, the first measure, right? So that's pretty straightforward and easy. In the second measure, this is what he does a little bit differently than what you were used to in Stone Pony Blues. <clears throat> instead of going, he, he replays another bass lick, but instead of starting from the second fret and sliding mm -hmm. to the tenth fret, mm -hmm. he's going to do it in reverse. So now he's going to go and start at the 10th fret 
go to the second fret and then pull off on the top string open. So the second measure will sound like this. And then it's followed up by the pinch lick again, but at a less frequent, um, in, with less frequency, maybe four notes. So the second measure will sound like this. In the middle of his coil. <clears throat> so when you put the two measures together, it's just like a mama snake, mama lordy. In the middle of his coil. So the first measure starts off with this bass pinch lick and then you go reverse on the bass lick. And this appears over and over throughout the song. Especially this bass note starting from the 10th fret to the 2nd fret. In the middle of his coil. So that's the first verse. And I'll, I'll play it uh, one more time for the last time. So starting, I guess, from the introduction, it's... Just like a mama snake, mama lordy, in the middle of his coil. <coughs> Alright, so that's, that's the first verse, and that's going to continue against the other remaining stanzas. So repeat the process there. Alright, and then after that, there's this this uh, instrumental uh, transitionary piece before he gets into the like the four chord position and that's gonna sound like this and so it appears after this portion wraps up in the first verse and it sounds like this. Just like a rattlesnake, Mama Lordy, in the middle of his coil. It's that part there. All right, so that's, there, there are three components here in this transitionary piece. And that's also going to reappear throughout the song as well. So we'll go over um, piece by piece here what's happening. So to kick in this, this phrase. What he does is he plays this reverse bass lick again. From the 10th fret to the 2nd fret, play the top string open. So that's the first component. <clears throat> and then He's going to take something from Stone Pony Blues, it's this, playing this E suspension chord in between strums of the E major chord. So there's going to be three strums here that sound like this. Alright, and that's, it's this, this, those three chords appear after this bass lick is initiated top string rings open and then you play those three chords and to do that playing these three chords you're basically fingering an E major chord the pinky then comes up for the second strum and then fingers the third string second fret making it that suspension for that second strum and then the pinky comes off and you play the E major chord again so it's E major suspension E major. One, two, three, one, two, three. So again, it's this bass. So that covers the second component. <clears throat> and then you play this transitionary bass line again, which is so important. I talked about it in Stone Pony Blues. It's, it sort of resets the timing, and it's this bass combination happening on the top string open, and again, the B note happening on the fifth string second fret. So you're sort of resetting the timing.
timing, and I have it in the second page of this song, circled. That's how important that bass uh, run is. <clears throat> and it appears immediately after those three strums of the E major and the E suspension chord. <clears throat> so, the, so I guess if you look at it in terms of six notes being played here, let's play the first three strums. E major, E suspension, E major. Then it's top string open with a little pause, then the B note. 5th string, 2nd fret, and then finally back to the top string open. So from the beginning of that measure you start with the bass, And then it, the, the remainder, the second measure, the remaining portion of this instrumental break is, is uh, played with strums of the E major chord. So when you put it all together, it's gonna sound like this. All right, and now I'm gonna play it slow and count it out. So again, coming from the bass, bass note, here we go. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> and I'm going to count it out. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. how that bass note resets the timing and it just sort of glues everything together and it's it's such a crucial element to the execution of playing this song so a lot happening there but these transitionary instrumental breaks reappear throughout the song and they bridge the one chord position the first verse to the the four chord four chord position the second verse. So now let's take a little break and we're gonna go over the four chord position. <clears throat> All right, so moving, moving on further, uh, last uh, time we picked uh, back up, it was we played this part. <laughs> and it leads into this. Just like a rattlesnake in the middle of his gold. this part so again this is also um, taking elements from stone pony blues in that first verse the first stanza of stone pony blues is a almost a carbon copy happening here and what what he does here in this sequence <clears throat> it's broken up by the two two measures here two components the first component being this so those are five notes there so it's kind of like a mini arpeggio on a diminished chord happening over the fifth sixth and eighth frets the five notes in this sequence are going to be you're going to kick it in with this bass combination you're going just playing the top string open followed by the fifth string open one two and let the fifth string ring open for a while then you're going to play this mini arpeggio piece. I don't know what this is. It sounds diminished to me. Feel free to comment and correct me because I'm not entirely clear on what it is. So to play the next three notes here, <clears throat> you'll play the 6th fret 3rd string, 6th fret 3rd string, then you go down to the 5th fret 2nd string and then finish with the 8th fret 2nd string. So it's 1, 2, 3, so the first 5 notes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm just like a rattlesnake, baby, 
I say. Just like a rattlesnake, baby, I say. This is where he's singing, baby, I'm just like a rattlesnake. All right, and then the second part of that portion, he plays it like this. In the middle of his coil. <clears throat> and then again, instead of going from the second fret to the tenth fret on the bass note, he, he continuously comes back to this reverse application of that. So the next measure is going <clears> to <throat> appear as six notes in all. You'll start it off with this reverse bass note, 10th fret, slide to the 2nd fret, play the top string, open after that. One, two, one, two. Then you go back to the pinched lick on the 7th and 8th fret. In the middle of his coil. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's uh, basically what he's doing there. Again, he repeats this in the, in the next stanzas as well. So once you get over these parts, you just rinse and repeat. All right, so together in this four position, the whole thing sounds like this. Well, I'm just like a rattlesnake in the middle of his coil. Well, I'm just like a rattlesnake in the middle of his coil. Alright, so those are the two components happening there. And then again, this is followed up by this instrumental break that we went over. And again, he repeats he repeats this over and over throughout the song. So I know we did spend a lot of time going over it. Just re reapply it there. So that's what he's doing there. And then we're going to go look at the five chord position and the, <clears throat> the boogie woogie rhythm that follows afterwards. So let's take a little break and we'll, we'll figure out what he's doing there. All right, so now we're going to look at the five position. Last time we left off on this. In the middle of his call. I ain't going to have no hard time, mama, rolling through this world. All right, so we're bringing back watched uh, Stone Pony Blues, we talked about this sort of compensating for what should be a B7 chord, but it technically is not. He's just playing double stops, but he is leading, leading into it with this bass run. So that part which goes, I ain't gonna have no time, I'm part here is is represents the five position <clears throat> and to do that you're going to lead with this with this uh, pronounced bass um, lead in to the portion so you start by playing these two notes one two and you'll locate the fifth string first fret and then end on again the B note the fifth string second fret one two one two you're leading into the root of a b7 chord but you're not really playing the b7 chord <clears throat> and then when you play <coughs> you lead in with this uh this bass note this is followed up by the series of double stops happening on the the third and first strings only over the second third and fourth fret start off by fingering the third string second fret and the bottom string second fret as a double stop. The thumb comes down, plays the third string, index finger plucks the first string. 
start with the second fret, shift, slide over to the third fret, maintaining the same fingering. Same thing on the right hand. And then you resolve with a bunch of strums on the fourth fret, maybe four or so. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. slot in the top string open when you're over in the fourth fret. So when you put it together, <clears throat> you start with the bass. One, two, three. And then it's followed up by this boogie woogie rhythm, which is different than Stone Pony Blues, which played two note combinations. That was in Stone Pony Blues. You have the same presence of notes, but he plays these notes individually as like a wind down. So in uh, Rattlesnake Blues, he's doing something like this. Rolling through this world. It's a little bit different the way he plays it here. I'll play it a little slower. Rolling through this world. <coughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and look at the boogie woogie rhythms here. We're only interested in looking at the top three strings, the sixth, fifth, and fourth strings. This is what's happening here. <clears throat> and the sequence of notes in all are about nine notes in all. All right, the first five notes, you're gonna play the fifth string open. Then you're gonna come and play the fourth string second fret. One, two. Then the ring finger, the pinky finger, is going to come and play the uh, fifth string fourth fret, followed by the fourth string open. So the first four notes are one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you come and play the fifth string second fret as that fifth note. So it's one, two, three, four, five, rolling. One, two, three, four, five. Then you'll play the fourth string open. <clears throat> and then he comes in and plays a double stop with the thumb playing the top string open <clears throat> and then the index ring on the right hand, plucking the fourth string second fret. Plays that twice. So it follows, nicely slots in there after this wind up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you end with the top string open that ninth note. So again, real slow, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Rolling through this world, rolling through this world, is the lyrics of that. So that's that boogie woogie portion. <clears throat> so naturally, like with Stone Pony Blues, the those two ending elements were the boogie woogie portion, followed by these double stops.
So I went over those extensively in Stone Pony Blues, but we'll go over it again. <clears throat> and to lock in and initiate those double stops, I guess you can tentatively play the top string open. <clears throat> and then play... Um, so there's going to be seven notes to follow after that. So I guess eight notes in all. The top string open. <clears throat> and what you're going to do is play... You could either play the bottom string open or the third string open with the bottom string open as a double stop. And then you're going to finger the third fret, uh, third fret third string and third fret bottom string and play that as a double stop. And then squeeze over to the fourth fret maintaining the same fingering. So it's one, Two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the way I have it tabbed out is I only have the bottom string played open. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Either way you want to play that. So that's the first part of that, the first four notes. One, then he plays the top string open again, and then he plays another series of uh, pull-offs. Again, he plays the third string and the bottom string open, and then he goes to the second fret, and he plays this fingering again, the second fret third string and the second fret bottom string, and then he slots over and just plays the third string first fret and the bottom string open, so like an E major. And that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. So the eight notes are one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> Let me try that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the other ending. So those pair of endings always come in succession with one another. The boogie woogie. Is an example of that. All right, and then it's followed up by again, this transitionary piece before the next stanza. And that sounds like this. follows after the double stops. All right, and so when we put it all together from the beginning of that five chord position, it sounds like this. I ain't gonna have no time, mama, rolling through this world. So that's how it sounds all together, and I'm gonna go real slow now. Starting again from the beginning, that five chord position. So it's one, two, three, four. I ain't gonna have no time, mama, rolling through this world. Now I'm gonna go again, again, real slow. I ain't gonna have no time, mama, rolling. This portion. That key bass combination happening in the top and the fifth string. Resets the timing. And then the E major chord. Alright, so that is the first stanza, and now we'll look at the other stanzas remaining, there's one different thing happening in the final stanza and we'll go over that pretty quickly, so stay tuned.
All right, so now we'll, we'll kind of recap what's happening in the other stanzas. So what we went over the first stanza pretty much repeats in the next four stanzas, and he does something slightly different in the final stanza and a tiny bit little different thing in the second stanza. So the second stanza is, <clears throat> it's going to start off uh, basically where we last left off. <laughs> So, moving over into the second stanza, for the most part, the second stanza starts off with what we, we covered already. That the rolling bass, the pinch lick, the reverse bass, back to the pinch lick, and then back to this measure. Except here, in this instrumental break, starts with the E major chord and then he slots in an E7 chord. He incorporates that at the end of that measure. E7 and then he continues with the same. When I go down my That's more of the same with what we're used to. And then he <clears throat> continues with the same. So if I meet you down, so if I meet you right then I'm going down. Back to that five chord position. And you can even fluctuate between the third and the fourth fret. And that's how I have it tabbed out here. It's optional up to you. Second fret, third fret, fourth fret, third fret, fourth fret. So that's slightly different from the first stanza. That's something that you can do there as well. So that's kind of a little, little few ingredients happening in the second stanza that are just slightly <clears throat> a tad bit different. All right, so. <clears throat> The, the rest of the song continues with the same structure of elements we've already covered. Now the only exception is the final stanza, and it's the part where he, where he has the lyrics, Heart Like Railroad Steel, and he brings back his bag of tricks from Stone Pony Blues and slots it in here as well. So that portion is going to sound like this. And my baby got a heart like, like railroad steel. And I'll play it one more time. And my baby's got a heart like lying in a rose deal. Alright, so <clears throat> that portion is is very unique. And again, it's this verse. The final stanza, and my baby's got a heart like a piece of railroad steel, <clears throat> he begins with the traditional, what we covered, the rolling bass lick, and then followed by the pinch lick. And my baby's got a piece, my baby's got a heart like. And then in the portion where he sings, piece of railroad steel, he already starts this. So railroad steel. <clears throat> now that's something I covered extensively in Stone Pony Blues, and it's going to be a, quite a bit of work. So <clears throat> I'll run that down. I'll explain that. I'll explain this portion once again. If you don't want to go back to Stone Pony Blues, <coughs> but uh, to execute this. 
this little arpeggio happening on what I think is again another diminished chord. What you're doing here is you're going to finger this set first by fingering the third string sixth fret, third string sixth fret, and then the pinky can come and play the second string eighth fret. So you've got it fingered like this. All right, so he's, while you're holding that down, you're gonna play a series of six notes, starting with the second string. So you'll play second string, then followed up by the bottom string open. Second string, first string. One, two. And then you slot up all the way to the third string. Third string, sixth fret. Again, you're fingering this. So third string, second string, and then first string. So the first five notes are one, two, then back to the third string, sixth fret, as the sixth note. So the six notes are one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Sec so I'm going to count out this, the number of the string that it sits on. So while you're fingering this, it's second string, first string, third string, second string, first string, third string. Second, first, third, second, first, third. So he leads in with those six notes, and then it's it's uh, repeated, but broken up by a series of two strikes of the top string open. Chop, chop. So there's eight notes in all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's piece of railroad steel. So he continues with that arpeggio across three measures. And then he ends, of course, with the pinch lick on the 7th and 8th fret. And then he goes back to this lick. And then he repeats what we already stated there. So that's the key difference happening on the final stanza. <clears throat> but the remaining concepts you just repeat across the stanzas. And the, the final, I guess, the final conclusion to the song is this. He ends on a long E chord. By first barring the third fret from the fourth string down. And then you slide over to the ninth fret. The pinky comes up and plays the bottom string 12th fret and he plays whatever three four strums of that to end the song completely all right so that is rattlesnake blues in a nutshell so now if you wanted to go back and play along with charlie patton these are one of the only few songs in standard tuning one of two to be played in the pitch of g even though you're in the key of E, your pitch is G. It's one of his highest pitch songs. So get that capo on the third fret and you can play along with him exactly to what you hear on the original recording. And that is Rattlesnake Blues. And it's very similar to Stone Pony Blues. Two very beautifully composed songs, very very rich in, in composition, very complex and unique renderings that Patton is executing there. All right, so again, it's been my pleasure producing the final lesson of, of this ebook series. 
Charlie Patton's work in standard tuning. You have so much material here to study all summer long. It is my absolute pleasure to present this to you. Get a hold of this damn ebook. It is sensational. Very clean, straightforward, easy to, to play along and understand. You all are going to be playing rocking Charlie Patton's music. And get a friend who plays the fiddle. I've been looking for somebody who plays the fiddle for forever. But uh, again, thanks again for following along. Like me on Facebook at Delta Lou Music. I post uh, a lot of things. Kind of news and developments are all happening on my Facebook page. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't already. As you see, I post videos almost daily or every other day. Anytime there's a release of an ebook, I'm posting videos daily rushing them out so it's a plethora of lessons out there for you to enjoy if you have any questions or shoot an email and check out my library on my website at www.deltaloomusic.com i have a bunch of free ebook downloads all my robert johnson mcdowell sunhouse skip james all free download content and do check out my store um got some great material there as well so i'm delta lou signing off thanks again everybody have a good day.